There are several useful features in Morfolio TraceUp that can take your sketching to the next level. Taking advantage of these tools is like having a sketchbook on steroids, and in today's video we'll look into three features in Morfolio TraceUp that I used to create this drawing without exerting too much effort and spending loads of time. So first off, let's create a blank sheet. Pick a ball pen brush at 4.5 dot size, select Super Ruler, and let's draw a simple house elevation. Toggle infinite angle with the roof pitch. So say I like the proportions of this elevation and I'd like to replicate it alongside. What I can do is I can go here, duplicate the layer, scale it, and adjust the way I like it, tap the accept, and I can repeat this procedure again. Adjust the position, tap accept. So now I want to merge all these layers together, so for that I'll pick the layer at the top, lasso tool to select it, and then tap on the layer below, and you can see here it's been copied down. I'll repeat the procedure to copy this layer down once more, select the layer, lasso tool, and then double tap on the layer below. And now I can get rid of these two main layers above. Just be careful when deleting because this action cannot be undone. I can then select the lasso tool again, rectangular selection, and then adjust the position of this drawing. So now say I wanted to add a timber hatch over this. If I create a new layer on top, I can then manually draw lines like so but it's quite labor intensive to do that for all of these three elevations. So what I can do instead, I'll erase these, enable ruler, select pen, and I'll just start hatching in the timber for this first elevation only. And at this point I can stop, hide the two layers underneath, tap this little button here, accept the default settings, tap single page layout and export again, and just simply save the image on the iPad. Then what I'll do is I'll enable the layers again, and over here let's tap the stencil tool, settings, and plus sign, library, and import our hatch. Adjust the scale of this, white areas will be the ones that are gonna get filled in. Click done, and here is our hatch again. I'll adjust its scale back to how I sketched it. Hit the lock button over here so that if I scale the drawing up and down, the hatch doesn't scale with it, but remains the same size as the drawing. You can get rid of this layer that I've previously created. Create a new layer for timber, and then Pick the black color and tap the bucket tool to start filling in the hatch. And once I've created this first texture, I can in a similar fashion as I did before, duplicate it, move it across, adjust the scale to fit the width of the next elevation, tap accept, duplicate it again, adjust the position, and as we have done previously using the lasso tool, we can select the hatches, and place them on the appropriate layers and delete the redundant blank layers. Now what I can quickly do is using erase tool and the ruler restraint, just get rid of all the lines that are beyond the boundary of the elevation. And finish the erasing freehand. And one feature that it does automatically is that it has the paper opacity setting, which means it acts pretty much like a tracing paper. So in order to see all the layers equally, we just have to reduce the paper opacity completely. And then what I want to do is I'll reduce the drawing opacity for the texture so that it's less intense. So say now I wanted to add a bit more volume to this elevation. For that I can create a one point perspective by picking perspective tool, one dot, adjust the location somewhere here, tap accept, and on a new layer, using the pen tool, I can start adding the depth to these buildings and also to these windows as well. And also to this deck in front of the houses as well. Adjust the stilt. And I can also add the perimeter gutters and the depth that they have. As you can see, layering plays a major part in this drawing because it gives me a control over what I can show and what I can reduce in the intensity. Next thing I can do is I can, on another layer, create another texture for the side walls. So timber at the bottom.
So having layers also helps me to control the opacity of individual elements. I can reduce, for example, the intensity of the side cladding, which is very dark otherwise if I leave it as it is. I can bump the intensity of the front cladding. With layers, it's very easy to erase the things that shouldn't be there as well. Let's get rid of the texture in front of the bridge. The last feature, or more like just the limitation of the apps that I see as a feature, is the brush selection. It's quite limited, but I think it's done on purpose. And using the brushes that we have available, you know, it kind of focuses us on, so for example, if I want to add texture and atmosphere and feel to this drawing, I can, for example, invoke this watercolor brush. There are other tools as well, like for example, this roller tool here that I like to use for the shadows. And then lastly, we have the marker tool as well, which is very specific to Morfolio Trace app, so I take advantage of that as well. There are obviously many more tools in Morfolio Trace app that are simply outside the scope of this video, but if you'd like to learn more about the innovative tools that it has to offer, then check out this other video that I'll link up over here that goes through some of my favorite features in Morfolio Trace app. So check that video out, and I'll see you in the next one.